So if you're just joining us, what we do, uh, what we have been doing this whole year is looking at the life of Jesus. We've been looking at it through the biography of a close friend of his named John. Uh, and John uh, has several different themes throughout his book on Jesus. <clears throat> One of the themes is the statements that Jesus makes about himself, which I think is really, really important uh, for us because we live in a world where so many of us have had negative experiences with either church or, uh, or faith or a certain group of people. Uh, that it's important for us to look at what Jesus himself says. We take him at his word about himself. So we've been, start, we've been calling this series I Am because he makes these I Am statements. And we're in the middle of this series now. Today we're talking about this statement where Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. So we're going to read that from John chapter 8 starting in verse 12 right now. So again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now again, we, we pause and say, Jesus' statements are so bold, so audacious, that either one, or one of these three things is true. Either Jesus is a liar, meaning that he knows that these things are not true about him, but he says them anyway. Or he's a lunatic who thinks that they're true, but they're not true. Or he actually is who he says he is. And he calls himself the light of the world and says, hey, if you happen to follow me, you're not going to walk in darkness. Now the Pharisees said to him, you're bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony, Jesus, is not true. So Jesus answered them, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true for I know where I've come from. I know where I'm going, but you don't know where I come from. Or where I'm going. He says to them, to these religious type of teachers and leaders, he says, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Verse 16. Yet even if I do judge, he says, my judgment is true, for it is not, not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Jesus is claiming to be in this relationship with God the Father. He's claiming to be one. In your law, he says, it is written uh, that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, well, where is your Father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my Father, because if you knew me, you would know my Father also. It says, these words he spoke to them in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him. For his hour had not yet come. So Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. Now, as we have said before about the person of Jesus, this is one of those times where uh, Jesus is similar to a diamond, where you can look at him and, and, and see beauty in one respect, and you can turn it a little bit and look from a different angle, and you see beauty in a whole other respect. Uh, when he calls himself the light of the world, we can see beauty in, in several different respects here. I think, I think for one, when we talk about light, light is so important because light gives life. Life comes from light. In fact, if you're trying uh, to grow a plant, you cannot like, put it in a dark room in your house. It needs some, it needs some light. And that is how you have life. So what Jesus says about himself, and you look elsewhere, what Jesus says, he says, I actually have come so that you can have life. So that you can have life. And as we've said throughout this series and throughout this year, the life that Jesus is talking about is, is peace and joy and fulfillment. And Jesus says, you know what? If you want that kind of life to grow, he says, you need me. You need the light of the world. Again, a very bold and audacious claim. But Jesus says, if you really want life in the deepest parts of you, you've got to come to me. So the question really we are answering today uh, from this passage is this, from this story is this. How does the light, how does the light of the world actually give life to your very soul? Like the deepest parts of you. How does Jesus do that? And the answer the answer to this question is simply that Jesus does that by revealing truth. So we just read from John chapter 8, verses 12 through 20. We're going to read both before that and we're going to read after that. So 
First of all, we'll read after this. And this is how Jesus talks about revealing truth actually gives life. So this conversation is still happening. He says that Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, he says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, he says. And again, this is where we talk about revealing truth. He says, you're going to know the truth. And guess what that truth is going to do in your life? It's going to set you free. So they answered, they answered him. They're, they're like kind of confused about this. They're like, okay, Jesus, we're offspring of Abraham. Uh, we've, never, we've never been enslaved to anyone. How is it you say that we will be free? We've never like not been free. What do you, what do you mean? And Jesus answered them. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. What Jesus is doing is making a statement here about what this word sin actually is. And, and this is where I honestly, I think that we can relate. Because sin is something that quite oftentimes is enticing for us. We're tempted because, you know what, this looks like it's a very uh, great satisfaction right in front of us. We, we think that we do this thing, we go down this path, that, that it's going to deliver something to us. And quite honestly, what happens is that maybe it, it does momentarily or just for a little bit. But then, after we're in this for a while, we realize we're like, this, this thing that I used to pursue because I thought it was going to deliver satisfaction, actually has its hold on me. And like, I wish I could stop this thing, but I can't. Like, it, it just has this control over me. And you want to be free, and you can't be free. And that's where sin draws us in, entices us, and then it imprisons us. That's what Jesus is saying. And he says, here's what I do you know what, yeah, you've never been a slave to anyone, but I'm actually going to free you from that. Verse 35, he says, the slave does not remain in the house forever, but he says the son remains forever, and then he comments about himself, and he says, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. What a statement by Jesus. Jesus is calling himself, referring to himself as the light of the world, something that can, has the power that, to give you life inside of you and says, and so much so that those things that are holding you down that you can't seem to like get out from under, he says, I can deliver you from those things. What a statement about your life that he's making. So he gives life, he, gives, he is the light of the world who gives life by revealing truth. Now, I think it is really, really important that at this moment we pause and we say, how does Jesus reveal truth? Because, because of this. And if you are brand new to New England, let me give you like a context of what you're walking into. You're, you will probably encounter people who have two different types of religious experiences. And it depends on what those religious experiences are. You may hear this. People, people may hear these words about revealing truth differently. So on one hand, you will probably encounter people who have been raised in a very strict religious background. Where really everything is about following rules. And here's the rules. It's basically the rule to follow the rules. And, and really what you need to do is you have, you've got to conform if you want to be like in. You've got to be like conform to this set of guidelines here. This is what's out of bounds. This is what's in bounds. And we are always right. So here's, here's like this religious type of environment that some have grown up in. And then others have grown up in this environment or have seen this environment where quite honestly they're really is, it's like the opposite, it's like the opposite of that. There is no, like, you need to do this. They will say things like, you know what, what you need to do is you need to follow your own heart. And you need to do what is best in your own eyes. And you can determine what is right and wrong for yourself. And over here, 
And we see these two different type of religious experiences here. And what I would say is wherever you are or whatever you think of when you think of church and religion, you'll probably hear this about Jesus revealing truth differently. If you're in this set right here, like in, if you have this in mind, you'll probably say, you know, Jesus, I have like, I've had this whole truth thing. Like I can't, I can't live up to, th- like I don't want any part of this. And then over here, you're like, well, how dare you talk about truth in my life? I determined what is right. Jesus shatters these categories. And this is why when we talk about the truth of Jesus, it's important to go back to what John says right at the beginning when he's introducing Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 17 says this. He says, the law was given through Moses, but guess what? Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Because right here, this side really, really focuses only on truth. Truth, 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 truth. You've got to conform. And there's very, very little grace. This side over here says, oh, it's all grace. Whatever you want to do is fine. But there's really no truth. And Jesus comes in and he says, I am grace and I am truth. When you encounter the truth of Jesus, it is graceful. When you encounter the grace of Jesus, it's truthful. And he shatters the categories. He is something altogether different. And he's light of the world. He gives life. He sets you free by revealing this graceful kind of truth. So how does he do it? Well, what we're going to do is walk through three different three different questions based on where you may be in your faith journey. So first of all, this question, how does the light of the world reveal truth to those who are outside the faith? So if you're here and you're like, I've never, I've never said yes to Jesus, I'm exploring this, I don't quite know what I think, uh, this question really is, is a question for, for you. The way that Jesus reveals, as the light of the world reveals truth to you is he does so without condemnation without condemnation so we go back and we read the early part of John chapter 8 starting in verse 2 early in the morning he came again to the temple all the people came to him and he sat down and he taught them the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Jesus, Jesus, you know the law, you know the rules. Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? And I will just pause here, and we see this in this next line. What they're doing is completely, completely on brand with what they always do. Because they're like religious, like you've got to follow the rules, here are the rules, the rule is to follow the rules, conform to this. And what they're trying to do is test Jesus, because they said, Jesus, you know what, we have seen you. We have seen you spend time with people of a certain reputation. Jesus, we've seen you with tax collectors, we've seen you with sinners. And you, Jesus, you talk about grace, and it's like you welcome people. And you know what, Jesus, I don't even know if you believe in truth at all. So you know what, it, it clearly says this, clearly says this in the law, and here's a real life example. Let's put you on the spot, Jesus, and see what you actually are going to do. They said this to test him. Why? Because they want to have, they want to bring some charge against Jesus. What did Jesus do? He bent down and he wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up. He said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. And Jesus stood up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? 
has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now on, sin no more. What does Jesus do in this response? Well, one, he speaks to her and does not condemn her. Second, he speaks to those who are self-righteous and don't really even know about it and calls them to examine themselves. And thirdly, what Jesus does is he tells her to sin no more, which is an indication that there is truth. Because what she had done is outside of what I would say is like the whole biblical view of sex and marriage. And if, you are, if you're brand new, if you're brand new, I think it's helpful for us to take a one minute detour and explain what that is. And I just said this at a wedding. I did a wedding with uh, a couple of good friends of mine here recently. And when we look at what scripture says about things like marriage and sex and how they all come together, it is very different than, than what our culture today says, and quite honestly, what a lot of cultures, even in the first century, say. Where at the very beginning of Scripture, we look in the, the book of Genesis, and it says that Adam and Eve, they were together, they were naked, and they felt no shame. And what we, what we have here is a picture of two people who are in this committed relationship, who are completely open and transparent before one another without shame but with love and it's this idea that you and I as human beings that really what we are made for is to know and to be known to we are made for this love where we want to be fully known and loved anyway. Like we want someone who will see all parts of us and be inside of a relationship with that person without shame or without condemnation. And what happens is where things get thrown off is so oftentimes when we move ahead physically with someone, we can't, we're moving ahead physically, beyond where we are emotionally and spiritually and mentally with that same person. And we're making a physical commitment that doesn't match all these other parts of our life. And that's where hurt happens. And so maybe you were raised in this religious environment where you said, you know, all this stuff is just about rules. You've got to follow these rules, follow these rules. No, the reason God gives you those rules, the reason God gives you, sets all of this up, is because he wants you to know and to be known. To, he wants you, he desires for you to be fully known and loved anyway. Because he created marriage to be a reflection of his love for you. So this woman who had committed adultery had stepped outside of this. And they were questioning Jesus, what would he do? What would you say, Jesus? Are you like, respond here? And he responds as he does. He responds without condemnation. Now, if you're sitting here and you're like, okay, well, I am a Jesus follower. How, how, do, how do I like do that with friends of mine who are outside the faith? Like, you reveal, can I ever reveal truth? Is that ever like, okay? And I will give an example of my life. I've probably done this wrong a hundred times. But I'll give a positive example. I had a friend of mine who was not a Jesus follower. Uh, someone that I have served the community with for years together. Someone who we've had conversations that we have hung out and ate together. And I know his life story. And he calls me up one day in a relationship where he's engaged and he said hey 
I've done something that I should not have done. And this is what it's done to my relationship. What do you think? I'm like, you're, ask, uh, it's a, you're asking my point of view on this? Yeah. Like, do you, do you want it? <laughs> and he says, yeah, I, I do. So I said, well, honestly, it comes back to Scripture because I've been in your shoes. And here's a Scripture that really reflects how I felt in that moment. So I said, can I read you this? So I read him this from the book of Romans, chapter 7. It says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I don't do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I, yeah, I agree that the law is good, but as it is, it is no longer I myself do it, who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that nothing good itself does not dwell in, my, in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but guess I can't carry it out. For the good I want to do, the, for, I do <laughs> for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil's right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. And he says, what a wretched man I am. And he asks this question, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? And he says, thanks be to God who delivers me through Christ Jesus our Lord. And then he goes on and starts the next chapter and says this, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What he is saying is, yeah, guess what? Me on the inside, I'm completely contradictory even with who I want to be. But Jesus offers no condemnation. I just shared that with my friend. And then he said, yes, I want Jesus and was baptized, which is awesome. How does Jesus reveal truth, the light of the world, to those who are outside the faith? He does so, he does so without condemnation. How does he reveal truth to those of us who are inside the church, like to each other, to fellow Jesus followers? That is the second question. And the answer to that question is that he does so gently. He does so gently. This this comes from Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. He says, Brothers, if anyone's caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. But then he goes in this line, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. What Jesus, what we see here in Scripture, what this Scripture is saying, hey, hey guess what? If you are, if you're a Jesus follower, you're probably not going to, like, correct and, and do all of these things that you think that you feel like you need to do to someone outside the faith. You're never going to, like, bring everyone to where their sexual ethic, like, reflects yours. Yes, that's not going to happen. In fact, I don't even know how much is your responsibility. But guess what? When someone is a part of a church, when someone who says, yes, I have followed Jesus, yes, I agree to, a com yeah, I've committed to Jesus, do you have responsibility to reveal truth to them? And what Scripture says is the answer is yes. You have responsibility. But I want to tell you how you do it. You do it gently. Because guess what? You yourself may fall. Don't come from this high, high place here. You yourself may fall. So you, got to, you have got to make sure that you do this with gentleness, with prayer and love, and, and in a relationship here of trust. Like you, that's how you do it. And for those of us, we say, you know what, I, I don't know, like, th this makes me a little bit uncomfortable, like, if talking to someone about their life, decisions they make, you know, because it's like, this is their, whatever they want to do is fine with it. No, listen, if you see someone going down a path 
a fellow Jesus follower who is going down a path they should not go and you do not say anything, you are not being loving to that person. It's the fact of the matter is, you are not being loving to that person if you don't say something. What he tells you how to do is how to do this, how to do this, and you do it gently. How does the light of the world reveal truth and bring life? First of all, if you are, if you are not a Jesus follower, he does so without condemnation. If you are a Jesus follower, he does so, he says, do so gently. And third of all, the question for us is then, how does the light of the world reveal truth to you? Like if you are a Jesus follower, how does the light of the world reveal truth to you? And the answer is that he does so persistently. He does so persistently. And here's what I mean. We look back at the Apostle Paul, the one who wrote the scripture that I read from my phone right here. And we look at his life and how he walked with Jesus. And I love his story because Paul comes from this place where he did all of these things before Jesus and he views himself as someone who is so much in need of grace, but he's writing to churches. He's even starting churches. And he reflects on his life. So one of his earlier writings, he reflects in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. I want you to notice how he refers to himself here. He says, I am the least of the apostles. What he talks about here is, here's a group of 12, 15 people. And he says, out of all those people, I am certainly the least because of all these things that I've done. I, I know myself. I'm the least out of these people. And then he writes a few years later, and he writes the book of Ephesians. Uh, and he says, for to me, although I'm the least of all the saints, what he's talking about is all the Christians, all the Jesus followers. At this point, thousands of people who have said yes to Jesus. Paul walks a little farther, and he's walked with Jesus a little bit more. More truth about himself has been revealed. And he says, not only am I the least of like this group of 12 to 15, I'm the least out of like everyone in the church. And then Paul keeps walking with Jesus, and towards the end of his life, he writes this, this letter to uh, his protege, the person he has mentored named Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, it says this. He says, there's a saying that is trustworthy, deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and he says, of whom I am the foremost. It's like Paul kept walking with Jesus, walking with the light of the world, and he kept revealing to him, Paul, you got this going on. Let's dig a little bit deeper. You got this going on. You got this going on. And Paul saw himself, he saw himself in a certain way, that the closer he got to Jesus, the more he realized that he wasn't even like Jesus, that Jesus is something altogether unique and different and special. And this is why, Jesus follower, it's so important that you are reading scripture, that I'm reading scripture, that we're walking with him, that he has this opportunity to reveal stuff about you to you. Because I have to believe, if we were a community of people who says, you know what, light of the world, shine on me first, that that community of people would be much more likely <laughs> to share truth with one another gently. much more likely to share truth with one another gently. And that community of people would be much more likely to share truth to those outside the faith without condemnation. The woman who had committed adultery was standing there. And Jesus said, he who is without the first, who he was at without sin can throw the first stone. There was someone standing there who was without sin. And that was Jesus. That he could have punished her in that moment. But he didn't. In fact, what Jesus did for you and for me is to receive our condemnation on our behalf on a cross and he died on that cross he was in that grave for three days and then he rose again so you and I can be in this relationship where we are fully known and loved anyway without shame without condemnation the light of the world Nothing, nothing is better than this.
absolutely nothing. Let's stand up.